Eukaryote, Wikipedia Audio Eukaryotic organisms that cannot be classified under the kingdoms Plantae, Animalia, or Fungi are sometimes grouped in the kingdom Protista. A eukaryote is any organism whose cells have a cell nucleus and other organelles enclosed within membranes. Eukaryotes belong to the domain Eukaryota or Eukarya, and can be unicellular or multicellular organisms. The defining feature that sets eukaryotic cells apart from prokaryotic cells is that they have membrane-bound organelles, especially the nucleus, which contains the genetic material enclosed by the nuclear membrane. The presence of a nucleus gives eukaryotes their name, which comes from the Greek epsilon and kaparo upsilon omicron nu. Eukaryotic cells also contain other membrane-bound organelles such as mitochondria and the Golgi apparatus. In addition, plants and algae contain chloroplasts. Unlike unicellular archaea and bacteria, eukaryotes may also be multicellular and include organisms consisting of many kinds of tissue and cell types. Eukaryotes can reproduce both asexually through mitosis and sexually through meiosis and gamete fusion. In mitosis, one cell divides to produce two genetically identical cells. In meiosis, DNA replication is followed by two rounds of cell division to produce four haploid daughter cells. These act as sex cells. Each gamete has just one set of chromosomes, each a unique mix of the corresponding pair of parental chromosomes resulting from genetic recombination during meiosis. History The domain Eukaryota appears to be monophyletic, and makes up one of the domains of life in the three-domain system. The two other domains, bacteria and archaea, are prokaryotes and have none of the above features. Eukaryotes represent a tiny minority of all living things. However, due to their generally much larger size, their collective worldwide biomass is estimated to be about equal to that of prokaryotes. Eukaryotes evolved approximately 1.62.1 billion years ago, during the Proterozoic Aeon. In 1905 and 1910, the Russian biologist Konstantin Miroskowski argued three things about the origin of nucleated cells. Firstly, plastids were reduced cyanobacteria in a symbiosis with a non-photosynthetic host. Secondly, the host had earlier in evolution formed by symbiosis between an amoeba-like host and a bacteria-like cell that formed the nucleus. Thirdly, plants inherited photosynthesis from cyanobacteria. A large central vacuole, which maintains the cell's turgor and controls movement of molecules between the cytosol and sap, a primary cell wall containing cellulose, hemicellulose, and pectin, deposited by the protoplast on the outside of the cell membrane, this contrasts with the cell walls of fungi which contain chitin, and the cell envelopes of prokaryotes, in which peptidoglycans are the main structural molecules, the plasmadesmata, linking pores in the cell wall that allow each plant cell to communicate with other adjacent cells, this is different from the functionally analogous system of gap junctions between animal cells, plastids, especially chloroplasts that contain chlorophyll, the pigment that gives plants their green color and allows them to perform photosynthesis, bryophytes and seedless vascular plants lack flagelli and centrioles except in the sperm cells. Sperm of cycads and ginkgo are large, complex cells that swim with hundreds to thousands of flagelli, conifers and flowering plants lack the flagelli and centrioles that are present in animal cells. The concept of the eukaryote has been attributed to the French biologist Edouard Chatton. 
The terms prokaryote and eukaryote were more definitively reintroduced by the Canadian microbiologist Roger Stanier and the Dutch-American microbiologist C. B. Van Neel in 1962. In his 1938 work Titers et Travaux Scientifiques, Chatton had proposed the two terms, calling the bacteria prokaryotes and organisms with nuclei in their cells eukaryotes. However he mentioned this in only one paragraph, and the idea was effectively ignored until Chatton's statement was rediscovered by Stanier and Van Neel. In 1967, Lynn Margulis provided microbiological evidence for endosymbiosis as the origin of chloroplasts and mitochondria in eukaryotic cells in her paper, On the Origin of Metosing Cells. In the 1970s, Carl Woese explored microbial phylogenetics, studying variations in 16S ribosomal RNA. This helped to uncover the origin of the eukaryotes and the symbiogenesis of two important eukaryote organelles, mitochondria and chloroplasts. In 1977, Woese and George Fox introduced a third form of life, which they called the archaebacteria. In 1990, Woese, Otto Kandler and Mark L. Wheeler renamed this the Archaea. In 1979, G. W. Gould and G. J. Dring suggested that the eukaryotic cell's nucleus came from the ability of gram-positive bacteria to form endospores. In 1987 and later papers, Thomas Cavalier Smith proposed instead that the membranes of the nucleus and endoplasmic reticulum first formed by enfolding a prokaryote's plasma membrane. In the 1990s, several other biologists proposed endosymbiotic origins for the nucleus, effectively reviving Mieroszkowski's theory. Eukaryotic cells are typically much larger than those of prokaryotes having a volume of around 10,000 times greater than the prokaryotic cell. They have a variety of internal membrane-bound structures, called organelles, and a cytoskeleton composed of microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments, which play an important role in defining the cell's organization and shape. Eukaryotic DNA is divided into several linear bundles called chromosomes, which are separated by a microtubular spindle during nuclear division. Eukaryote cells include a variety of membrane-bound structures, collectively referred to as the endomembrane system. Simple compartments, called vesicles and vacuoles, can form by budding off other membranes. Many cells ingest food and other materials through a process of endocytosis, where the outer membrane invaginates and then pinches off to form a vesicle. It is probable that most other membrane-bound organelles are ultimately derived from such vesicles. Alternatively some products produced by the cell can leave in a vesicle through exocytosis. A cell wall that contains chitin less definition between cells, the hyphae of higher fungi have porous partitions called septa, which allow the passage of cytoplasm, organelles, and, sometimes, nuclei. Primitive fungi have few or no septa, so each organism is essentially a giant multinucleate supercell, these fungi are described as synocytic, only the most primitive fungi, Chytrids, have flagella. The nucleus is surrounded by a double membrane, with pores that allow material to move in and out. Various tube and sheet like extensions of the nuclear membrane form the endoplasmic reticulum, which is involved in protein transport and maturation. It includes the rough endoplasmic reticulum where ribosomes are attached to synthesize proteins which enter the interior space or lumen. Subsequently, they generally enter vesicles, which bud off from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. In most eukaryotes, 
these protein-carrying vesicles are released and further modified in stacks of flattened vesicles, the Golgi apparatus. Vesicles may be specialized for various purposes. For instance, Lysosomes contain digestive enzymes that break down most biomolecules in the cytoplasm. Peroxisomes are used to break down peroxide, which is otherwise toxic. Many protozoans have contractile vacuoles, which collect and expel excess water, and extrusomes, which expel material used to deflect predators or capture prey. In higher plants, most of a cell's volume is taken up by a central vacuole, which mostly contains water and primarily maintains its osmotic pressure. Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Plantae, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Animalia Cell Features Mitochondria are organelles found in nearly all eukaryotes that provide energy to the cell by converting ingested sugars into ADP. They have two surrounding membranes, the inner of which is folded into invaginations called Christi, where aerobic respiration takes place. Mitochondria contain their own DNA. They are now generally held to have developed from endosymbiotic prokaryotes probably proteobacteria. Protozoa and microbes that lack mitochondria, such as the Amoebozoan palomiza and metamonads such as Giardia and Trichomonas, have usually been found to contain mitochondrion-derived organelles, such as hydrogenosomes and metosomes, and thus probably lost the mitochondria secondarily. They obtain energy by enzymatic action on nutrients absorbed from the environment. The metamonad monocircomonoids has also acquired, by lateral gene transfer, a cytosolic sulfur mobilization system which provides the clusters of iron and sulfur required for protein synthesis. The normal mitochondrial iron-sulfur cluster pathway has been lost secondarily. Plants and various groups of algae also have plastids. Plastids have their own DNA and are developed from endosymbionts, in this case cyanobacteria. They usually take the form of chloroplasts, which like cyanobacteria contain chlorophyll and produce organic compounds through photosynthesis. Others are involved in storing food. Although plastids probably had a single origin, not all plastid-containing groups are closely related. Instead, some eukaryotes have obtained them from others through secondary endosymbiosis or ingestion. Endosymbiotic origins have also been proposed for the nucleus, and for eukaryotic flagella. Many eukaryotes have long slender modal cytoplasmic projections, called flagella, or similar structures called cilia. Flagella and cilia are sometimes referred to as undulopodia, and are variously involved in movement, feeding, and sensation. They are composed mainly of tubulin. These are entirely distinct from prokaryotic flagellae. They are supported by a bundle of microtubules arising from a centrioli, characteristically arranged as nine doublets surrounding two singlets. Flagella also may have hairs, or mastogonemes, and scales connecting membranes and internal rods. Their interior is continuous with the cell's cytoplasm. Microfilamental structures composed of actin and actin binding proteins e.g., alpha-actinin, fimbrin, filamen are present in submembraneous cortical layers and bundles, as well. Motor proteins of microtubules, e.g., dynein, or kinesin and actin, e.g., myosins provide dynamic character of the network. Centrioles are often present even in cells and groups that do not have flagella, but conifers and flowering plants have neither. They generally occur in groups that give rise to various microtubular roots. 
these form a primary component of the cytoskeletal structure, and are often assembled over the course of several cell divisions, with one flagellum retained from the parent and the other derived from it. Centrioles produce the spindle during nuclear division. The significance of cytoskeletal structures is underlined in the determination of shape of the cells, as well as their being essential components of migratory responses like chemotaxis and chemokinesis. Some protists have various other microtubule-supported organelles. These include the radiolaria and heliozoa, which produce axopodia used in flotation or to capture prey, and the haptophytes, which have a peculiar flagellum-like organelle called the haptonma. Internal Membrane Mitochondria and Plastids The cells of plants, fungi, and most chromalveolates have a cell wall, a layer outside the cell membrane, providing the cell with structural support, protection, and a filtering mechanism. The cell wall also prevents overexpansion when water enters the cell. Eukaryotes resulted from the complete fusion of two or more cells, wherein the cytoplasm formed from a eubacterium, and the nucleus from an archaean, from a virus, or from a pre-cell, eukaryotes developed from archaea, and acquired their eubacterial characteristics through the endosymbiosis of a protomitochondrion of eubacterial origin. Eukaryotes and archaea developed separately from a modified eubacterium. Cytoskeletal structures Cell wall Differences among eukaryotic cells Animal cell Plant cell The major polysaccharides making up the primary cell wall of land plants are cellulose, hemocellulose, and pectin. The cellulose microfibrils are linked via hemicellulosic tethers to form the cellulose hemicellulose network, which is embedded in the pectin matrix. The most common hemicellulose in the primary cell wall is xyloglucan. The chronocyte hypothesis postulates that a primitive eukaryotic cell was formed by the endosymbiosis of both archaea and bacteria by a third type of cell termed a chronocyte, the universal common ancestor of the current tree of life was a complex organism that survived a mass extinction event rather than an early stage in the evolution of life. Eukaryotes and in particular acaryotes evolved through reductive loss, so that similarities result from differential retention of original features. There are many different types of eukaryotic cells, though animals and plants are the most familiar eukaryotes, and thus provide an excellent starting point for understanding eukaryotic structure. Fungi and many protists have some substantial differences, however. All animals are eukaryotic. Animal cells are distinct from those of other eukaryotes, most notably plants, as they lack cell walls and chloroplasts and have smaller vacuoles. Due to the lack of a cell wall, animal cells can adopt a variety of shapes. A phagocytic cell can even engulf other structures. Fungal cell Plant cells are quite different from the cells of the other eukaryotic organisms. Their distinctive features are the cells of fungi are most similar to animal cells, with the following exceptions. Eukaryotes are a very diverse group, and their cell structures are equally diverse. Many have cell walls, many do not. Many have chloroplasts, derived from primary, secondary, or even tertiary endosymbiosis, and many do not. Some groups have unique structures, such as the cyanels of the glaucophytes, the haptonma of the haptophytes, or the ejectosomes of the cryptomonads. Other structures, such as pseudopodia, are found in various eukaryote groups in different forms, 
such as the lobos amoebozoans or the reticulose foraminiferans. Cell division generally takes place asexually by mitosis, a process that allows each daughter nucleus to receive one copy of each chromosome. In most eukaryotes, there is also a process of sexual reproduction, typically involving an alternation between haploid generations, wherein only one copy of each chromosome is present, and diploid generations, wherein two copies of each chromosome are present, occurring through meiosis. There is considerable variation in this pattern. Eukaryotes have a smaller surface area to volume ratio than prokaryotes, and thus have lower metabolic rates and longer generation times. In some multicellular organisms, cells specialized for metabolism have enlarged surface areas, such as intestinal villi. The evolution of sexual reproduction may be a primordial and fundamental characteristic of eukaryotes. Based on a phylogenetic analysis, Dax and Roger proposed that facultative sex was present in the common ancestor of all eukaryotes. A core set of genes that function in meiosis is present in both Trichomonas vaginalis and Giardia intestinalis, two organisms previously thought to be asexual. Since these two species are descendants of lineages that diverged early from the eukaryotic evolutionary tree, it was inferred that core meiotic genes, and hence sex, were likely present in a common ancestor of all eukaryotes. Eukaryotic species once thought to be asexual, such as parasitic protozoa of the genus Leishmania, have been shown to have a sexual cycle. Also, Evidence now indicates that amoebae, previously regarded as asexual, are anciently sexual and that the majority of present-day asexual groups likely arose recently and independently. In antiquity, the two lineages of animals and plants were recognized. They were given the taxonomic rank of kingdom by Linnaeus. Though he included the fungi with plants with some reservations, it was later realized that they are quite distinct and warrant a separate kingdom, the composition of which was not entirely clear until the 1980s. The various single-cell eukaryotes were originally placed with plants or animals when they became known. In 1830, the German biologist George A. Goldfuss coined the word protozoa to refer to organisms such as ciliates, and this group was expanded until it encompassed all single-celled eukaryotes, and given their own kingdom, the Protista, by Ernst Haeckel in 1866. The eukaryotes thus came to be composed of four kingdoms. Other eukaryotic cells The protists were understood to be primitive forms, and thus an evolutionary grade united by their primitive unicellular nature. The disentanglement of the deep splits in the tree of life only really started with DNA sequencing, leading to a system of domains rather than kingdoms as top-level rank being put forward by Carl Woese, uniting all the eukaryote kingdoms under the eukaryote domain. At the same time, work on the protist tree intensified, and is still actively going on today. Several alternative classifications have been forwarded, though there is no consensus in the field. A classification produced in 2005 for the International Society of Protistologists, which reflected the consensus of the time, divided the eukaryotes into six supposedly monophyletic supergroups. However, in the same year, Doubts were expressed as to whether some of these supergroups were monophyletic, particularly the Chromalveolata, and a review in 2006 noted the lack of evidence for several of the supposed six supergroups. A revised classification in 2012 recognizes five supergroups. Reproduction 
There are also smaller groups of eukaryotes whose position is uncertain or seems to fall outside the major groups in particular, Haptophyta, Cryptophyta, Centrohylida, Telonemia, Picozoa, Apusimonatida, Enseromatidida, Breviata, and the genus Colodictian. Overall, it seems that, although progress has been made, there are still very significant uncertainties in the evolutionary history and classification of eukaryotes. As Roger N. Simpson said in 2009 with the current pace of change in our understanding of the eukaryote tree of life, we should proceed with caution. In an article published in Nature Microbiology in April 2016 the authors, reinforced once again that the life we see around us plants, animals, humans, and other so-called eukaryotes represent a tiny percentage of the world's biodiversity. They classified eukaryote based on the inheritance of their information systems as opposed to lipid or other cellular structures. Gillian F. Banfield of the University of California Berkeley and fellow scientists used a supercomputer to generate a diagram of a new tree of life based on DNA from 3,000 species including 2,072 known species and 1,011 newly reported microbial organisms, whose DNA they had gathered from diverse environments. As the capacity to sequence DNA became easier, Banfield and team were able to do metagenomic sequencing sequencing whole communities of organisms at once and picking out the individual groups based on their genes alone. Classification Phylogeny Five supergroups The rRNA trees constructed during the 1980s and 1990s left most eukaryotes in an unresolved crown group which was usually divided by the form of the mitochondrial Christi, see crown eukaryotes. The few groups that lack mitochondria branched separately, and so the absence was believed to be primitive, but this is now considered an artifact of long branch attraction, and they are known to have lost them secondarily. As of 2011, there is widespread agreement that the rhizaria belong with the stromenopiles and the alveolata, in a clade dubbed the SAR supergroup, so that rhizaria is not one of the main eukaryote groups, also that the amoebozoa and epistocontat are each monophyletic and form a clade, often called the unicants. Beyond this, there does not appear to be a consensus. It has been estimated that there may be 75 distinct lineages of eukaryotes. Most of these lineages are protists. The known eukaryote genome sizes vary from 8.2 megabases in Babesia bovis to 112,000220,050 MB in the dinoflagellate Prorocentrum micans showing that the genome of the ancestral eukaryote has undergone considerable variation during its evolution. The last common ancestor of all eukaryotes is believed to have been a phagotrophic protist with a nucleus, at least one centrioli and cilium, facultatively aerobic mitochondria, sex, a dormant cyst with a cell wall of chitin and slash or cellulose and peroxisomes. Later endosymbiosis led to the spread of plastids in some lineages. A global tree of eukaryotes from a consensus of phylogenetic evidence, rare genomic signatures, and morphological characteristics is presented in ADLETAL 2012 and Berkey 2014-2016 with the cryptophyta and picozoa having emerged within the archaeplastida. A similar inclusion of Glaucophyta, Cryptista is recovered in Karnkowska etl. Red algae Picozoa Glaucophyta Green plants Cryptista Haptista Anchorocysta Telonemia Stromenopiles
Alveolata Rhizaria Discoba Amoebozoa Apusimonadida Holomycota Holozoa in some analyses, the Hacrobia group is placed next to Archaeplastida, but in other ones it is nested inside the Archaeplastida. However, several recent studies have concluded that Haptophyta and Cryptophyta do not form a monophyletic group. The former could be a sister group to the SAR group, the latter cluster with the Archaeplastida. The division of the eukaryotes into two primary clades, biconts and unicants, derived from an ancestral biflagellar organism and an ancestral uniflagellar organism, respectively, had been suggested earlier. A 2012 study produced a somewhat similar division, although noting that the terms unicants and biconts were not used in the original sense. A highly converged and congruent set of trees appears in Darrell et al., Ren et al., Yang et al. and Cavalier Smith including the supplementary information, resulting in a more conservative and consolidated tree. It is combined with some results from Cavalier Smith for the basal apimota. The main remaining controversies are the root, and the exact positioning of the rhodophyta and the bicons rhizaria, haptista, cryptista, picozoa, and telonemia, many of which may be eukaryote-eukaryote hybrids. Archaeoplastida developed the chloroplasts probably by endosymbiosis of an ancestor related to a currently extant cyanobacterium, Gloia margarita lithophora. Glaucophyta Rhodophyta Viridiplanti Haptista Cryptista Stromenopiles Alveolata Rhizaria Discoba Metamonata Anceromonas Malawimonas Diphylata, Regifolita Mantamonas Amoebozoa Cavalier Smith's tree Breviata Apusimonadida Apisthocantat Thomas Cavalier Smith 2010, 2013, 2014 and 2017 places the eukaryotic tree's root between Excavata and the grooveless Euglenozoa and monophyletic chromista, correlated to a single endosymbiotic event of capturing a red algae. Tsukubia Origin of eukaryotes Euglenozoa Percolazo Fossils Jacobia Glaucophytes Relationship to archaea Endomembrane system and mitochondria. Rhodophytes. Viridiplanti. Hacrobia. Hypotheses. Autogenous models. Chimeric models. SAR. Metamonata. Malaimonadia. Anceromatodida. Mantamonadia Diphylata Amoebozoa Breviata Apusimonadida Apisthocantat The origin of the eukaryotic cell is a milestone in the evolution of life, since eukaryotes include all complex cells and almost all multicellular organisms. The timing of this series of events is hard to determine, Noel suggests they developed approximately 1.62.1 billion years ago. Some acritarchs are known from at least 1.65 billion years ago, and the possible alga crepania has been found as far back as 2.1 billion years ago. 
the geosophon-like fossil fungus disc agma has been found in pale ossils 2.2 billion years old. Organized living structures have been found in the black shales of the Paleo-Proterozoic Francevalian B formation in Gabon, dated at 2.1 billion years old. Eukaryotic life could have evolved at that time. Fossils that are clearly related to modern groups start appearing an estimated 1.2 billion years ago, in the form of a red alga, though recent work suggests the existence of fossilized filamentous algae in the Vindhya Basin dating back perhaps to 1.6 to 1.7 billion years ago. Biomarkers suggest that at least stem eukaryotes arose even earlier. The presence of strains in Australian shales indicates that eukaryotes were present in these rocks dated at 2.7 billion years old. The nuclear DNA and genetic machinery of eukaryotes is more similar to archaea than bacteria, leading to a controversial suggestion that eukaryotes should be grouped with archaea in the clade Neomura. In other respects, such as membrane composition, eukaryotes are similar to bacteria. Three main explanations for this have been proposed. Alternative proposals include Assuming no other group is involved, there are three possible phylogenies for the bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota in which each is monophyletic. These are labeled 1 to 3 in the table below. The eocyte hypothesis is a modification of hypothesis 2 in which the archaea are paraphyletic. Archaea Bacteria Eukaryota Eukaryota Archaea Bacteria Eukaryota Bacteria Archaea Eukaryota Archaea crinarchaeata Archaea uriarchaeata Bacteria In recent years, most researchers have favored either the three domains or the eocyte hypotheses. An rRNA analysis supports the eocyte scenario, apparently with the eukaryote root in excavata. A cladogram supporting the eocyte hypothesis, positioning eukaryotes within archaea, based on phylogenomic analyses of the Asgard archaea, is Corachaeata Crinarchaeata Agarchaeata Geoarchaeata Thomarchaeata Bathyarchaeata Lokiarchaeata Odinarchaeata Thorachaeata Heimdallarchaeata Eukaryota In this scenario, the Asgard group is seen as a sister taxon of the TAC group, which comprises Krenarchaeata, Thaumarchaeata, and others. In 2017, there has been significant pushback against this scenario arguing that the eukaryotes did not emerge within the archaea. CUNA ETAL produced analyses supporting the three domains or WOS hypothesis and rejecting the eocyte hypothesis. Harish and Kurland found strong support for the earlier two empires or Mayer hypothesis, based on analyses of the coding sequences of protein domains. They rejected the eocyte hypothesis as the least likely. A possible interpretation of their analysis is that the universal common ancestor of the current tree of life was a complex organism that survived an evolutionary bottleneck, rather than a simpler organism arising early in the history of life. The origins of the endomembrane system and mitochondria are also unclear. The phagotrophic hypothesis proposes that eukaryotic type membranes lacking a cell wall originated first, with the development of endocytosis, whereas mitochondria were acquired by ingestion as endosymbionts. 
The syntrophic hypothesis proposes that the proto-eukaryote relied on the proto-mitochondrion for food, and so ultimately grew to surround it. Here the membranes originated after the engulfment of the mitochondrion, in part thanks to mitochondrial genes. In a study using genomes to construct supertrees, Pisani et al. suggest that, along with evidence that there was never a mitochondrion-less eukaryote, eukaryotes evolved from a syntrophy between an archaea closely related to thermoplasmatal and an alpha proteobacterium, likely a symbiosis driven by sulfur or hydrogen. The mitochondrion and its genome is a remnant of the alpha proteobacterial endosymbiont. Different hypotheses have been proposed as to how eukaryotic cells came into existence. These hypotheses can be classified into two distinct classes autogenous models and chimeric models. Autogenous models propose that a proto-eukaryotic cell containing a nucleus existed first, and later acquired mitochondria. According to this model, a large prokaryote developed invaginations in its plasma membrane in order to obtain enough surface area to service its cytoplasmic volume. As the invaginations differentiated in function, some became separate compartments giving rise to the endomembrane system, including the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, nuclear membrane, and single membrane structures such as lysosomes. Mitochondria are proposed to come from the endosymbiosis of an aerobic proteobacterium, and it's assumed that all the eukaryotic lineages that did not acquire mitochondria became extinct. Chloroplasts came about from another endosymbiotic event involving cyanobacteria. Since all eukaryotes have mitochondria, but not all have chloroplasts, the serial endosymbiosis theory proposes that mitochondria came first. Chimeric models claim that two prokaryotic cells existed initially in archaean and a bacterium. These cells underwent a merging process, either by a physical fusion or by endosymbiosis, thereby leading to the formation of a eukaryotic cell. Within these chimeric models, some studies further claim that mitochondria originated from a bacterial ancestor while others emphasize the role of endosymbiotic processes behind the origin of mitochondria. Based on the process of mutualistic symbiosis, the hypotheses can be categorized as the serial endosymbiotic theory, the hydrogen hypothesis, and the centrophy hypothesis. According to serial endosymbiotic theory, a union between a modal anaerobic bacterium and a thermoacidophilic crinarchian gave rise to the present-day eukaryotes. This union established a modal organism capable of living in the already existing acidic and sulfurous waters. Oxygen is known to cause toxicity to organisms that lack the required metabolic machinery. Thus, the Archean provided the bacterium with a highly beneficial reduced environment. In microaerophilic conditions, oxygen was reduced to water thereby creating a mutual benefit platform. The bacterium on the other hand, contributed the necessary fermentation products and electron acceptors along with its motility feature to the Archean thereby gaining a swimming motility for the organism. From a consortium of bacterial and archaeal DNA originated the nuclear genome of eukaryotic cells. Spirochetes gave rise to the modal features of eukaryotic cells. Endosymbiotic unifications of the ancestors of alpha proteobacteria and cyanobacteria, led to the origin of mitochondria and plastids respectively. For example, Thiodendron has been known to have originated via an ectosymbiotic process based on a similar syntrophy of sulfur existing between the two types of bacteria Desulfobacter and Spirochaeta. However, such an association based on modal symbiosis have never been observed practically. 
Also there is no evidence of archaeans and spirochetes adapting to intense acid-based environments. In the hydrogen hypothesis, the symbiotic linkage of an anaerobic and autotrophic methanogenic archaean with an alpha proteobacterium gave rise to the eukaryotes. The host utilized hydrogen and carbon dioxide to produce methane while the symbiont, capable of aerobic respiration, expelled H2 and count E2 as byproducts of anaerobic fermentation process. The host's methanogenic environment worked as a sink for H2, which resulted in heightened bacterial fermentation. Endosymbiotic gene transfer acted as a catalyst for the host to acquire the symbiont's carbohydrate metabolism and turn heterotrophic in nature. Subsequently, the host's methane forming capability was lost. Thus, the origins of the heterotrophic organelle are identical to the origins of the eukaryotic lineage. In this hypothesis, the presence of H2 represents the selective force that forged eukaryotes out of prokaryotes. The syntrophy hypothesis was developed in contrast to the hydrogen hypothesis and proposes the existence of two symbiotic events. According to this theory, the origin of eukaryotic cells was based on metabolic symbiosis between a methanogenic archaean and a delta proteobacterium. This syntrophic symbiosis was initially facilitated by H2 transfer between different species under anaerobic environments. In earlier stages, an alpha proteobacterium became a member of this integration, and later developed into the mitochondrion. Gene transfer from a delta proteobacterium to an archaean led to the methanogenic archaean developing into a nucleus. The archaean constituted the genetic apparatus, while the delta proteobacterium contributed towards the cytoplasmic features. This theory incorporates two selective forces at the time of nucleus evolution presence of metabolic partitioning to avoid the harmful effects of the CO existence of anabolic and catabolic cellular pathways and prevention of abnormal protein biosynthesis due to a vast spread of introns in the archaeal genes after acquiring the mitochondrion and losing methanogenesis. This article incorporates public domain material from the NCBI document Science Primer.